If your toddler has been diagnosed with autism or is waiting for a diagnosis, you're going to want to pay attention for the next 60 seconds. Happy Ladders is parent-led early autism therapy that empowers you, the parent, to teach your toddler essential developmental skills through play. Studies have shown that the parent-led model is highly effective while eliminating frustration over long wait lists or the worry about losing precious developmental time, all without the disruption of people coming into your home. Happy Ladders includes activities that target 150 essential developmental skills every toddler needs, as well as assessments in four different developmental areas. There's also an exclusive community of parents just like you and professional coaching to ensure success for both you and your toddler. To learn more, get a free trial, and take advantage of an exclusive limited time offer for my listeners, visit happyladders.com. That's H-A-P-P-Y-L-A-D-D-E-R-S. Use the code THEAUTISMDAD at checkout to save 50% off the monthly membership. Plus, get a free one-on-one session as well as access to the Tantrums and Meltdown mini course. This is a limited time offer, so act now. If your toddler has been diagnosed with autism or is waiting for a diagnosis, you're going to want to pay attention for the next 60 seconds. Happy Ladders is parent-led early autism therapy that empowers you, the parent, to teach your toddler essential developmental skills through play. Studies have shown that the parent-led model is highly effective while eliminating frustration over long wait lists or the worry about losing precious developmental time, all without the disruption of people coming into your home. Happy Ladders includes activities that target 150 essential developmental skills every toddler needs, as well as assessments in four different developmental areas. There's also an exclusive community of parents just like you and professional coaching to ensure success for both you and your toddler. To learn more, get a free trial, and take advantage of an exclusive limited time offer for my listeners, visit happyladders.com. That's H-A-P-P-Y-L-A-D-D-E-R-S. Use the code THEAUTISMDAD at checkout to save 50% off the monthly membership. Plus, get a free one-on-one session as well as access to the Tantrums and Meltdown mini course. This is a limited time offer, so act now. Hey, what's up, folks? Uh, My name is Rob Gorski, and you're listening to the Autism Dad podcast. Uh, Before we get started, I wanted to just say that I know that we're all going through a lot right now, and I truly hope that you, your family, your friends, any other loved ones, I hope that you're all doing okay. I hope that you are safe, that you are healthy that you were following the guidelines put out by the public health officials. And uh, I truly wish you the best. So I just, I just wanted to say that uh, before we got started. The Autism Debt is brought to you by Mightier. Mightier is a fantastic program out of Harvard Medical and Boston Children's uh, that uses a wrist strap, heart rate monitor, and video games to help your child learn to emotionally self-regulate. That means fewer meltdowns. Um, it works for any kid because it's biofeedback uh, for kids, and it, so it works for anyone, uh, but it's especially effective in kids who are on the autism spectrum. Uh, as you may or may not know, uh, kids on the autism spectrum can have a more difficult time uh, with emotional self-regulation. Uh, my kids are no exception to that. And, and what this does is it, is it finds an engaging way to, to teach them to recognize the feelings in their body, their emotions, and, and it rewards them with better gameplay by, by keeping those emotions in check and calming themselves down and keeping their heart rate in, in, a, in a certain place. It's, it's, it's brilliantly simple. Uh, it's proven science. They have proven that it reduces meltdowns up to 60%. That's good for the whole family. When your child is less stressed out and they're not experiencing distress, they're happier. You know, when, when they're in a better place, as parents, our stress level uh, is lower. And, and so it's a positive thing for the whole family. It's fun. It's engaging. Uh, my kids love it. And they offer a 30-day free trial. So there's no risk. You can give it a try. If you don't like it, you can just send it back. Uh, you can find out more information and read about my journey with my son uh, using this program uh, at theautismdad.com forward slash mightier. That's theautismdad.com forward slash mightier. What I wanted to do today was was do a follow-up uh, on what I talked about the other day in regards to my oldest son, Gavin, and his medication. Uh, just a little bit of background on Gavin. Gavin is 20 years old. Uh, he's autistic. Uh, he has a very rare form of autism called childhood disintegrative disorder, uh, which means that he basically developed, he hit all his milestones until he was about three or four. And and then there was a, a switch that flipped and he sort of began to regress. But his is, it's very, very rare. But his is even rarer. He presents atypically, meaning um, 
what they do know about childhood disintegrated disorder, Gavin sort of doesn't present the way that most other people do. Whereas um, a lot of people, they regress until they sort of hit a plateau and then that's sort of where they stay. Gavin, um, he, he sort of ebbs and flows a little bit. And, and so it makes it challenging, but that's not really the point of what we're talking about today. So what I wanted to talk about was the fact that Gavin is schizophrenic. And one of the things that was of great concern to, to me uh, when we went on lockdown was how we were going to manage his medication. Gavin's on a medication called clozapine. Um, clozapine is among the most tightly controlled medications in the United States. It's banned in a lot of other countries uh, for some sort of complicated reasons. And uh, I'm not, I'm not going to get into that right now because it doesn't really matter. But what you need to know is that in order to get refills of clozapine, you have to have blood work done because they're looking for uh, like a complete CBC. And they're looking for specific things in your blood to indicate that you are having side effects that are or could potentially be life-threatening. So uh, you're on clozapine for six months. You get seven seven days supply at a time. You have to have blood work done before your next refill. So uh, if you do that and your blood work comes back normal uh, for that entire six-month period of time, then you get to move up. You get two weeks at a time. And if your lab work comes back uh, normal, every two weeks for six months, then you get to move up to a 30 day supply. And then you have lab work done once a month. As long as everything stays kosher, uh, it's, it stays that way. But if you have hiccups in your lab work, then things can, can, you sort of have to start over again. The dosage may stay the same, but how frequently the lab work is and when you get your refills, uh, can change. Gavin just recently graduated again to the 30 day supply. Uh, he's been on it for about five or six years in, and, and he's had some ups and downs, uh, with it, but it's worked really well for him. Um, one of the concerns that I have with lockdown was how am I going to get his lab work done, uh, when we are on lockdown due to the coronavirus pandemic? Um, the concern is that Gavin has a compromised immune system. I'm not comfortable taking him to a facility to have his labs drawn where he's going to be around a lot of people in an enclosed area. And a lot of people there are there because they're sick or, or maybe they're just getting lab work done, whatever. But the point is, is that I'm not comfortable putting him at risk. Uh, I've talked it over with uh, Liz, his mom, and um, we decided that we were going to have him weaned off of it for right now because we just didn't want to take any chances with his health and safety. Um, there really is nothing good about doing this uh, because, well, first of all, there's a lot of misunderstanding in, in um, assumptions made about people who are schizophrenic. Gavin is, is very gentle. He's very, um, he's very kind and considerate and empathetic. And it's with, with the schizophrenia, it, it, he just sort of loses touch with reality and he sees and hears things that aren't there. He thinks he's places that he's not, it's not really violent or dark or anything like that. It's always a good versus evil. He's, he, he, he sort of champions this team of, of superheroes in this other dimension um, who fight the bad guys and save people and whatever. So, so it's not, I'm not super concerned about that. Taking him off of the clozapine means that we are likely going to have a resurgence of, of, uh, symptoms. Um, they never quite went away on the medication, but they're not as intense. And, and he can sort of straddle that line between reality and psychosis in, taking him off of medication means that we're going to sort of pull that line away and everything's going to be blurred. Uh, I'm not concerned about him being aggressive or violent or dangerous or a threat to himself or anybody else. Uh, but it will, he, you know, he will, he will sort of detach from reality a little bit more or maybe a lot more. And he'll probably isolate himself to his room where he's going to interact with people who don't exist and, and run these missions. Uh, the boys probably won't, notice a whole lot of difference. So I'm not really concerned about them. The big downside is that he's going to want to tell me about it and it's going to be fairly frequently and it's going to be endless. Um, 
it's a, it's a lot to take in. He, he's a talker to start with. And, uh, hearing about his, his, um, delusions and, and missions and things like that. It, it just, it's, it wears on you after a while. And I'm not looking forward to that, but the alternative is something that could potentially put his life at risk. And I'm just, I'm not willing to do that. So, uh, I, I met with his doctor on Monday via a video conference and we decided that we're going to wean him off, um, over a period of about 12 days to two weeks in there. Um, we fully expect that we're going to see a resurgence of symptoms. It really ideally is not a good idea, uh, especially being in lockdown and, and with the stress and whatever, but, uh, but the alternative of exposing him potentially to other people uh, who may be sick, it, it's just not, it's just not worth it. And so uh, I've managed him many times unmedicated. And so I know what to expect there. Uh, taking him out and exposing him to other people right now with, with the COVID-19 virus sort of running unchecked is, is a lot of unknown uh, injected into our life. And I, I have no control over that. And, and so the worst case scenario there could result in him being hospitalized or him losing his life. The worst case scenario with him coming off his medications is that he drives me crazy. That's, that's pretty much what it comes down to. Um, so, so we decided that we were going to do that. We're going to do it sort of slowly and in three stages, um, basically cut the dose in half every four days. There, there's no, there's not really withdrawal symptoms or anything like that. We're just going to hit a threshold where it just stops working and, and we're going to see a, a significant change in his behavior. Um, but I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not super concerned about that. And it's the lesser of two evils. You know, we sort of had to pick, there was no good solution. Uh, and so we had to pick the best of the worst ideas in, and, and that was this, um, we could have done, we, you know, there's a lot of people who have suggested things like, you know, maybe you could make arrangements at the lab and, uh, and those are all good ideas. Problem is, is that we're still exposing him to another person. We're not exposing ourselves to anybody right now. We're staying home. We're on lockdown, not only for ourselves, but for everyone else. I'm trying to protect my parents, uh, your parents. Uh, your family, my family, my neighbors, everybody. So we're doing our part. Every time I would expose him to anyone, it, it throws an unknown into the mix, meaning I don't know if the person that he's exposed to is infected with COVID-19, but asymptomatic um, or, or things like that. And so it just, I know he'll be okay if I don't take him anywhere right now. So so it just makes the most sense to me to do this. And like I said, I, I spoke with Liz um, and, and we just decided that that was the best approach. I'm not suggesting that it's going to be easy. It's certainly not going to be fun. <laughs> um, and to be honest, like I'm, uh, I'm already so stressed out and I am so overwhelmed and I'm getting scared to some degree. You know, this is a scary time in, uh, adding something more to the mix seems like a really bad idea, but at the end of the day, this is predictable. The other one isn't. And I will err on the side of my son's life every time. Uh, so, so that's what we're doing with that. Uh, we're doing this in a way that it's, like I said, it's staged. There's, there's three levels that we're going to go through over the next two weeks. If we get to a point where things get crazy dangerous or, or something happens with him that, indicates that we just simply cannot pull him off of the medication, then we just put him back on. Uh, and then we'll figure something out with the lab work. I, I, I don't foresee that happening, but it is still, it is still, it's a challenge. Um, one of the things that makes this pandemic so scary for me, uh, is one I'm on my own as a single parent and, and everyone relies on me for everything. And, and it's, 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 it's an awesome responsibility and I can control what we do, but I can't control what everybody else does. And because I can't control what everybody else does, I have to walk this very fine line between preparedness and paranoia. And it's, it's, it's a very, 
it gets very blurry sometimes uh, when you have a child or a loved one who has compromised uh, has a compromised immune system that sort of ups the stress level of this entire thing significantly because they're at high risk. And I I don't know what I would do if something happened to him. And and I, 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 I just cannot take that chance. So, so I'm going out of my way to, to, uh, to limit any outside exposure to my family right now. So, uh, that means myself, that means the other kids, and especially it means Gavin, because if I get sick, then I've exposed him. If the other two kids get sick, then I'm exposed and Gavin's exposed. I mean, we just can't have this. It's like Pandora's box. We can't open it. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Um, I am, uh, my, my hope is that I can handle it gracefully, <laughs> that I can, uh, that I can rise to the occasion and, and, and sort of navigate this. Uh, but this is just one of those things that, you know, special needs parents have to deal with and, you know, uh, it's frustrating. It's overwhelming. The world is not designed to, to make these decisions easier or more practical. I have to, to simply do what I think is best and run with it. Uh, I have no way to know whether I'm making the right decision or not until after the fact. And, uh, hopefully I've made the right decision. If, if I didn't, there's nothing I can do about it at that point, but, you know, change course. Uh, I'm hoping that it doesn't come to that because I really, really don't want to, to take any chances with his life. And and I'm just not, uh, not feeling real good about the way the world's going at the moment, especially, uh, this country. So, um, anyhow, that's sort of where we stand everything else is, is pretty status quo for right now. The kids are struggling with homework. Like, um, the last episode that we did, uh, with Emmett talking about the homework, I am, uh, I'm not entirely sure what the thought process is on this because when you have autistic kids and you, you, you literally throw their lives into upheaval by locking them down, taking them out of school, changing everything, keeping them from family or friends if they're not, uh, you know, living with them. And then on top of that, we give them homework that is considered mandatory. It's, I I just, I I don't, I mean, I, I get it. I understand the point, but I don't know. It's just not practical. And, And I've, I'm spending a lot of my resources, uh, just trying to get them through their homework and it's, it's disruptive at this point, you know, and, uh, it's frustrating and I'm hoping that they find a better way to do this, you know, maybe something that's less mandatory, but maybe encouraging them to read more or, uh, use their brains for, for different tasks that might be related to being on lockdown, something creative, uh, because this is just, it's, it's making a bad situation more difficult, at least for me. And I've talked to a lot of other parents, talked to a lot of you on Twitter, and a lot of you are kind of dealing with the same thing, you know, and I, I I guess I just don't, I just don't agree with it. I I don't understand the logic behind it. And, uh, it's something that's frustrating. I, I have a lot of battles that I'm fighting right now, and there's going to quickly become a point where, where I just say, fuck it. We're not doing the work. I, I don't, I don't care. You know, I only have, uh, so many shits to give anymore. <laughs> and, and if I spend any of those shits on homework, then I have less to spend elsewhere. And, and I just, I can't do that right now. And mom, I apologize. Uh, I usually try to keep these, uh, PG, uh, but that's just where we are right now. Uh, I'm overwhelmed. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm frustrated. Uh, I'm un- uncertain about how this is all going to play out, but we're doing okay. Uh, everybody's healthy. We're safe. We have food and, you know, I, I have you guys to talk to, which always helps. So, you know, it could be worse. You know, there's a lot of people out there that are already losing their lives and, and I have to keep that, I have to keep that, uh, 
that mindset that it can always be worse. So I guess that about sums up kind of where we are right now. Um, I don't expect really any major changes this week. Not that it is going to matter because I don't have any control over what happens at this point. Um, but as Gavin gets lower and lower on his medication, um, we'll probably start seeing more and more uh, behaviors. And that's about that's about where it leaves us right now. So again, you know, I, I really hope that you guys are doing well. I'm, I'm still trying to get uh, some experts lined up to talk about the COVID-19 virus and how you can keep your family safe. There's a lot of um, unease, we'll say, with the lack of preparedness that uh, the leadership in this country has shown. Uh, you know, I live in Ohio and Mike DeWine is somebody I did not vote for because I don't agree with a lot of his policies. However, I don't know that we could have had a better leader in this moment. He is doing amazing for our country or or for our, well, for our country too, because what happens in Ohio can set an example for other, other states. Uh, And I'm very grateful for, for everything that he has done and that he's doing to proactively try and limit the spread, uh, uh, um, flatten the curve and, and try and keep us all safe and healthy and alive. So uh, I do appreciate that. And like I said, it could always be worse. But uh, anyhow, I hope that you guys are all doing okay. Please, please take this seriously. Wash your hands. Um, get your information from reliable sources. I will always have the information in the show notes below so you can check that out. Uh, whether it's Cleveland Clinic, the Mayo Clinic, um, Dr. Tara Smith is is somebody who I rely on very heavily. She's an infectious disease expert. Uh, she was on a podcast a few episodes ago. So just, just make sure you're getting the facts and, and not anything political in nature. Um, you guys can always find me at theautismdad.com. Uh, my social links are at the top of the page. You can send me a message on Twitter. Uh, my DMs are open. So uh, if you have something you need me to uh, to talk to me about or something, you can, you can do that. Or you can just hit the contact page on the blog. And, and either way, I respond to everybody um, if I can. So... Outside of that, uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast listening app. Uh, Just do a search for The Autism Dad and and hit the subscribe button. Appreciate that. Makes me feel good. Uh, Outside of that, I hope you guys have uh, a great week as best as you can. Stay safe. Stay healthy. uh, Be smart. Be prepared. Don't panic. And I will be back, uh, I don't know, probably in a few days to to update you guys and, and hopefully bring you some more relevant information. So have a great day, guys. Thanks. Bye. Autistic kids can sometimes struggle to learn new skills such as riding a bike, reading, or simply having a conversation to a high level of proficiency and automaticity. Brainiac is a brain enhancement program that gets to the root of the problem. It builds stronger brain and body connections that elevate learning capacity within four to six months. Brainiac cross-trains motor movement, visual, auditory, and cognitive thinking connections using fun, interactive video games. Strength and connections allow kids to learn new skills and perform them automatically with more confidence and greater independence. Brainiac is for homes and schools. Visit canoe.com. That's K I N U U dot com. And be sure to use the code The Autism Data at checkout to save $500. It's a limited time offer and it will expire on May 31st.